your eyes on this screen. Street Sense for tough consumers. Gets major cash from the Canadian Bankers Association. It's the Loud Show. I'm Jonathan Torrance. Today we're going to take a special look at a time that shook the music world. With never before seen previously unreleased documentary footage, we'll show you the events leading up to one very black day in rock history. I'm Jonathan Torrens. Stay tuned for the Loud House Anthology. I'm Jonathan Torrens. Welcome back to the Loud House Anthology, the dark odyssey of one Canadian band. On drums, Anna Dirksen, snatched from total obscurity in Coal Harbour, Nova Scotia, to the relative obscurity of Street Sense, CBC Halifax. On lead guitar, Brian the Lingley. Originally from Liverpool. No, not that Liverpool. But Liverpool, Nova Scotia, population 3,500. It all started weeks ago, here, in the north corner of this high school cafeteria, at the table next to the wall. Troubled by their grad committee's choice of DJ, Anna and Ling formed their own band in an unsuccessful bid to have live music at the upcoming grad dance of 96. The band went through many incarnations, Citadel Hill, Fast Walking Pigeon, the Mothers of Confederation, until finally they arrived at the name Loud House. Well, whenever we practiced at my place, my mom would always yell, You're too loud! Get out of the house! So, I don't know. I guess the name's just up. It wasn't long before Loud House's powerful instrumentals first came to the attention of a big name in the music industry. You are now looking at recently uncovered RCMP surveillance footage of Ken Pompadour's office. Uh, sorry guys, I've decided not to sign your band. <sighs> Because I found out, one, you're not ladies, and two, you do not perform bare naked. Uh, oh, hang on. Turn it down, you tuneless hooligans! I'll get back to you. Open. Close. What's the most common thing your parents say to you when you're watching much music? When I'm watching much music? How can you listen to that noise? Do you have to watch that all the time? They laugh. <laughs> they laugh. They look at TV and they laugh, you know, for most of the groups. My mom will come in and she'll bug me. She'll say, oh, I know why you're watching that. You just want to see those girls wearing those short dresses and those girls dancing in those bikinis and whatever. It's usually like, you know, what is that you're watching? Because it's usually, you know, like when you watch R. Kelly or something, like his videos are really obs obscene and stuff. So it's usually like, what is that you're watching right away? They like to um, watch all the different videos and then they tell me, oh, this isn't as good as it was in my day, you know? Or, uh, you know, I really don't like what they did with that because that just is very, like, distasteful and stuff. So they like to critique it a lot. What's your beef? Hi, my name is Heather Peters and I'm from Halifax. My beef is radio stations play the same music over and over again. Quiet! Oh! Quiet! Oh! Uh, Ken! Uh, can you please be quiet? <laughs> Me? Me? I'm trying to explain to Heather why radio stations play the same songs over and over. I can answer that. Oh? Anything to get away from that noise. Heather! Radio stations make their money selling commercial time to advertisers. Oh, really? So naturally, they play the music that keeps the listeners tuning in. So the never-ending Michael Bolton and Whitney Houston songs are just to keep us listeners happy? Look, Wavefish One, it takes a lot of airplay to hit every listener with a song they want to hear. You complain if they didn't play your favorite song often enough. I would. And besides, some of you whiners, uh -huh, teenagers, listen to the radio more often than the average grown-up listener. So because us whiners, uh -huh, teenagers, listen to the radio more often, we hear more song repeats? Hmm. 
Ah, there's also the music industry angle. Do tell. Record companies put their promotion money into getting radio stations to play hit singles. So you hear those grooves more often. The record companies don't try for airplay on all the tracks of a CD? No, little bop it. It's more effective to promote one tune. You gullible consumers will buy a whole album just to get that one hit. <laughs> all righty then. Come on. Come on. All right. You can go on making noise again, Ken. I've finished answering today's beef. You have? I'll tell you what my beef is. This place is never quiet! If you have a beef, call us at 1-800-565-BEEF. Let's talk musical influences. Okay. Chris from the Partridge family? <laughs> yeah, right. Hmm. Then who? Uh, let's see, uh, Sheila E, Trey Cool. The drummer from Green Day. Yeah, Tito Puente, and of course, Fidelity Jones from Dog Attitude. So how come the band broke up, Anna? What really happened between you and Brian the Lingley? I told you I didn't want to talk about it. Get lost, but, Jono. Come on, Anna, think of the publicity. Think of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jason Hovland, I'm the guitarist. I'm Alex, and I'm the drummer. I'm Chris Nelson, and uh, I'm a lackey who plays guitar and tries to sing. I'm we, uh, we jam but, uh, two to three times a week as a band. And handbills, uh, posters. Uh, I just uh, go to the, my usual places where I hang out, and I hand out handbills. What are you doing tonight? Oh, we're playing that gig tonight. It's like Tetris, block after block, I'm just putting them in to the right place. Okay, so where's it still going? Uh, in Jason's lap. Ah. Our first gig here was a uh, freebie. It was uh, yeah. self-promotion, basically. We were doing it for self-promotion. Uh, playing out is just great no matter what, but uh, I don't know. I like, I like when people come to our show and we get paid. But, like, if you're a band, you can really get, you can really get screwed around by people. We're going to be really selective about where we play, though. You know, we just want to yeah. nice homey places where they appreciate good music. Exactly. There's a lot of local bands that make really bad demos, and that but that's what really injures them in the beginning. We want to get it done sometime soon, but we want to make it like a good recording. So yeah. we want to make sure it's top notch yeah. for us, anyhow. for a grant right now, a uh, demo grant. The CD production will cost about 1500 CDs are going to be used for like sending to A&R reps and stuff. For a shirt, they're going to, you know, look at it and pay more attention to it. Yeah. I'm just going to put Loomer 50 instead of Labatt 50. We're blatantly ripping off uh, logos from companies. I think, like, well, I think, well, I think that'll help to like uh, spread word about our band. I got, a, I got a really good budget Super 8 camera and it had film with it, so we're basically going to use that format for making a video just super eight and budget once again. This is our money yeah, right man. Yeah, Al, Al's our money man. I'm the money man, and these guys are the kind of the promoters. They always go talk to yeah. people and socialize. And, yeah, yeah, they're schmoozers. They're schmoozers. Today's email is from Jimmy Hayes in Grand Mail, Quebec. He writes, Rachel, if you are reading this, I thought you did an excellent job as host, and I wish you all the luck and happiness in the world. Did you pick this letter? No. Thanks, Jimmy. He also writes, By the way, I've always wondered, do the hosts get paid to do street sense? I mean, personally, I do the show for free. Jimmy, that won't be necessary. Yeah, the only thing around here for free is this low-key street sense shirt. Which we'll be mailing out to you, so stay right where you are. <laughs> Brian the Lingley, Loud House. I'd prefer to remain silent on that issue. Oh. But I will say, when it comes to music, Anna Dirksen is pathologically conventional. In what way? Well, for one thing, she wanted Loud House to have a 
Bass player. Yeah, lots of bands have bass players. Oh, like you street sense hosts even possess a modicum of musical taste. Hey! You're on a show that uses cheap made for TV music. Allow me a break. Yo, beautiful people, check out the fresh new vibe from the CBC Music Station. Open up the house to Street Sense Dance Mix 95. The Techno Pit is a fat new track in the house. Street Testa Mix is a fat new track in full effect. House of Beef in full effect is a fat fresh new track in the house. Hedgehog Nation in full effect is a fat fresh new track. Beautiful people, the Nation Station is rocking the house with Street Sense Dance Mix 95. Rachel Clark. You were close to Loud House before the breakup. Oh, yeah. What happened? Well, if you ask me, Anna and Lingley are making a big thing out of nothing. I mean, they're just they're just a two-bit garage band. <laughs> no offense, two-bit. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> like they even knew a seventh chord. And could they handle a key change or write a half-decent lyric? I don't think so. But isn't it true, Rachel, that you wanted to be in Loud House? Well... And you taught me a lesson like a class I took when I went to school. You don't care. You remind me that the marks I bear are no passing grade. You, you, you failed me. Rachel, Rachel um, thanks a lot. So am I in the band or what? Rach, we don't want to hurt your feelings, but... John, I'll get that camera out of here. We, we don't quite think you achieve the Loud House sound. Oh, what? Y you think I can't sing? Because if that's what you think, then I don't know. Okay, you're just too obviously derivative of Alanis Morissette, all right? What? You've even got one hand in your pocket. Kelsey, we're coming. <laughs> Why, oh why, do television commercials sound louder than television programs? Observe carefully the needle on this volume meter. See, these are the sound levels of a television program. Now notice the fluctuations, the pauses. These are the sound levels of a typical television commercial. Observe how the needle stays at the same higher level. No dips, no pauses, it is all peak sound. Now for the scientific explanation of this phenomenon, Street Sense consulted CBC's own crack engineering department. Dave told us the makers of commercials run the sound through a device known as a compressor. The words, the music, the sound effects are all compressed, squeezed together much like a sound sandwich. See, then technicians raise the level of the total sound sandwich to the highest volume acceptable for television broadcast. There is another factor in this equation. Add content and presentation. Observe the contrast between this delightfully peaceful program and the inevitable commercial break. <laughs> if you have a broken bone, scar, lost limb, head injury, paralysis. Uh, annoying? Yes. Effective in grabbing your attention. So Certainly. You have to give advertisers that. Of course, we here at Street Sense would never stoop to those tactics. Of course not. Never. <laughs> Money! Money. I really want to save money. I really do. Well, I give my money to my parents, and then they hide it for me. Put 10% of all the money you get into a separate bank account that you won't touch. I put the money I want to save in a spam chant because I hate spam. I take the money, I put it in a cup, and forget about it. Set goals for your spending. Put up a picture of what you're saving for to remind you of your daily sacrifices. I wash and iron the money I want to save, and then I put it in a freezer to keep it crisp. I usually save all my coins and then make a lot of deposits. Plan your spending a month at a time. Remember to include the money you spend on junk food and CDs. If you know where your money goes, you'll know how to save it. Watch out for the I want it now syndrome. Don't carry a lot of cash when you go out and leave your bank card at home. I give my money to the Easter Bunny and he hides it for me. Here's the money, Mr. Bunny. Uh, when I heard the news, I was uh, shocked and uh, deeply saddened. 
Uh, Street Sense has been on the air for uh, five, no, seven years. And it's been like a second family to me. Bry, I... what's going on, man? <laughs> what? Where's your Ken costume? Oh, aren't you interviewing me about the breakup of Street Sense? Oh. No, I'm supposed to be interviewing Ken about the breakup of Loud House, okay? No one told me. I left the script changes in your dressing room. <laughs> it's okay, just go get changed, okay? <laughs> oh, not the leather pants again! <laughs> Ken, you're a music industry insider. Yes. What caused the breakup of Loud House? The usual. My sources tell me, well, you know. What? Well, let's just say there was a little <whistles> and a little <whistles> not to mention a little <whistles> uh, praying, runny noses, and impersonating Mr. Spock, or? Sex, drugs, and scandal. We're talking the music industry here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Trash It, the show where my guests and I trash the trash in popular culture. Today's topic, television talk shows. It's just a street test. Our contestants, Ricky Lake, Jenny Jones, Jerry Springer, Gordon Elliott, and Tempest Bledsoe can all be seen in a majority of Canadian TV markets. We'll be rating these shows on a scale of from one to Oprah. The lowest score is the worst, and the worst is the winner, and that's our king or queen of the heap. My panel and I watch two random episodes of each show. First off, Jerry Springer. The two episodes of Jerry Springer that we watched were an update on troubled families and strange reunions. Now, Jerry Springer is pure trash. He treats his guests like crap. You are doing something that is so stupid, you're gonna kill yourself. He's rude to them, he cuts them off. So on a scale of one to Oprah, Jerry Springer averages a two. Big Bad Beautiful Babes and You Dump Me Look At Me Now? What the heck kind of topics are these? These are topics that would be on the Gordon Elliott show. This guy is pretty trashy. I mean, he flirted with the women, at the same time mocked them. On our scale from one to Oprah, we averaged a one. After watching two episodes of Ricky Lake, Pot Smoking Parents, and You Kicked Me Out, Now Please Take Me Back, we could say that she's not very courteous. Wait a minute, if you're the one, you get high too, then who are you making all the rules? She's always cutting off her guests, and, and on the opening credits, she has them all chanting, Go Ricky, Go Ricky, again and again. I just think it's very trashy. And on the scale of one to Oprah, we give her a three. The other talk show that we evaluated was Jenny Jones. Her topics were guest updates and how they've changed, and TV sitcom stars of the 70s and where are they now. It was a lot more conservative than the rest of the TV talk shows. We gave her a four. Oh, Tempest, Tempest, Tempest. We wanted to like her because of the Cosby show, but... She sucked. She had as a subject, please stop calling me, I don't want to go out with you, and I've seen you on television, now I have to meet you. And she also had these cheesy intros of people kissing the television set of who they wanted to meet. Actually, she was the worst one we saw, but since it wasn't trashy, we had to give her a three. And our winner, the trashiest talk show with the lowest average score was... Panel? Definitely, with an average of one. Gordon, Gordon Elliott. Because we couldn't give him a negative one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, the controversial music video that may have led to a loud house divided. So, Loud House, what do you think of your first Jonathan Torrens music video? We'll never get into heavy rotation on much with this. Indeed, a one-time broadcast on the wedge seems doubtful. Jono, what's your cat doing in my video? Where am I? And what's with this dancer? Where am I? Please stop thinking about yourself and focus on what's important! Where am I? 
Jamie McIntosh of Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia has a complaint about this. So far, so good. Brian Adams' greatest hits cassette. Give it to me straight from the Okay, Brian, we will. After you buy the cassette, you find out you don't get any song lyrics. Do I have to say the words? No, but it'd be nice if you wrote them down for us. Well, not all artists have lyrics in with their tapes, but Michelle from the Brian Adams Fan Club told us the lyrics are available on Brian's other cassettes. Which is why he decided to do something different with So Far So Good. The Liners got an offer for a lyric book with 32 full-size pages illustrated in color. Just send a money order for $12 US. That's American cash, even though the address you send the money into is in Canada. Cause it cuts like a knife. It sure does. A money order costs $3.25. And the $12 US is around $16.46 Canadian, with a total of $19.71. And here it is. Almost 20 bucks for that? Everything I do, I do it for you. Well, everything except give us the words to your songs for free. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. Okay, Brian, we forgive you. But we still think your overpriced lyric book offer is fit for the pit. Is there one particular song that you play over and over again? Waterfall by TLC. I fought the law. The Dead Kennedys remix. Yawning or Snarling by the Tragically Hip. Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. With or Without You by U2. Is the breakup of Loud House permanent? Or can this tragic split be averted by the intervention of friends? What's he doing here? <sighs> Ling, this has gone on long enough. Anna, remember the ballad you wrote after you got dumped by your first and only boyfriend? Ballad? Shut up. Both of us were wrong, but you were wrong more. I've still got my pride, but you're down on the floor. But I'm bigger, bigger than, than you. you. I'll give you one, one more chance. I'll give you one more chance, because I'm bigger, bigger than, than you. After hearing that, I think it's worth another try. Indeed. We broke up because we thought we suck. But listening to your cover of my song, I know Loud House couldn't be a worse band than you and Rachel. <gasps> if you have any comments, write us at Street Sense, care of CBC TV, P.O. Box 3000, Halifax, Nova Scotia, B3J3E9. Or you can email us at streetsense at screen.com. Everyone who emails us gets information on how to access our worldwide website. Street Sense gets major cash from the Canadian Bankers Association. Would you please be quiet? What is this? Ten to dance. I, I'm not dancing. Come on. I, I only know one dance move. Come on. Really? Yeah. All right, here we go. Robot. It, it's cool, Ken. 